Hi guys. We had so much trouble with one of the homework problems yesterday that I thought it would be worth just taking a few minutes to throw together a little example that was similar that had some of the same issues. So the idea is you've got a spacecraft initially moving with a certain velocity, it's a vector, fires a thruster producing a constant acceleration with a certain magnitude at a certain direction. Uh, for a period, a certain period of time, three seconds. So the question is, how do we compute, uh, for example, the final velocity and the displacement and things like that? So let's think about it. We've got an initial velocity that's a vector. It's got an x component of 3 and a y component of 1 meter per second. Then uh, the acceleration is a vector that is at an angle relative to the initial velocity. And uh, we need to compute that vector. So the x component is going to be 2 times the cosine of 68, and the y component is going to be 2 times the sine of 68, just by simple trigonometry. You can calculate those values, and you can get a vector representation of the acceleration. Now, I'm using my uh, angle bracket notation. You could also use the i hat and j hat notation. It all means the same thing. But the, uh, the important thing is that you can compute the change in the velocity knowing the acceleration vector. How do you do it? You multiply the acceleration vector by the time. So the time in this case is 3 seconds. So you multiply that acceleration vector by 3 seconds and you get a change in velocity. Now notice this is just based on the definition of average acceleration. The change in velocity divided by the change in time is the average acceleration. So the change in velocity has to be the average acceleration times the change in time. Okay, so now we're going to calculate the final velocity at the end of the three second interval. How are we going to do that? Well, we just need to add the change in the velocity vector to the initial velocity vector to get the final velocity vector. That's all there is to it. Now, because these are vectors, we need to add the x components and the y components. So 3 plus 2.248 is 5.248, and 1 plus 5.563 is 6.563. That's all there is to it. That gives us a final velocity. Now notice, if we had instead been given the initial velocity and the final velocity, we could use simple vector arithmetic to compute the change in velocity, and if we knew the time interval, we could calculate the acceleration. Or if we knew the acceleration, we could calculate the time interval. There's lots of different ways to slice this thing, but it's all just vector addition and multiplication by scalars and so on. Okay, what's another question we could ask? What's the average velocity during the three second interval? Well, because we're assuming the acceleration is constant, it turns out the average velocity is nothing other than the numerical or arithmetic mean, the average of the initial and final velocities themselves. So that's easy to calculate. We know the initial, we know the final, we can get the average. It basically splits the difference between the two. So that's the average velocity. What can we do with that? Well, let's say we want to know the displacement at the end of the three second interval. Well, that's easy. The displacement and the average velocity are related by this simple relationship. Remember, the definition of average velocity is the displacement divided by the change in time. So that means the displacement has to be the average velocity times the change in time. So we can simply take the average velocity vector we had, multiply it by the three seconds, and out comes the displacement. Easy as pie. All right, let's say we're asked to find the magnitude and the angle of the displacement at the end of the three second interval. Well, the magnitude of any vector is just the square root of the sum of the squares of the components of the vector. So since we have the displacement in component form, we can square each of those components and we can compute the magnitude of that vector. How about the angle? How do we get that? Well, that's just a little trigonometry. You can see that the uh, y component is the opposite side, the x component is the adjacent side, and that's, that means that the uh, tangent of that angle has to be the y component divided by the x component. So the angle is just the inverse tangent, so we can calculate that angle. And that's really all there is to it. Of course, different problems can know different things and not know different things, and so you might have to solve various problems in, in a different order, but the concepts are actually not too bad. I hope that helps.